Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Today we're going to be playing some more Brogue. Looking forward to it. Welcome Xylan, Glord, Box Fan. Good to see you all. Finally catch a live stream. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. Hey, Within Wheels, thank you. Yeah, Glord, fresh Brogue run. Have you played much Brogue yet, or are you, uh... Gonna be another NetHack convert. It's kind of cool to have seen the seed you're gonna do, different way of experiencing the game. Yeah, so today we're gonna be trying the weekly seed contest. So this has been going on for years on Reddit slash r slash brogue forum the brogue subreddit and i never really participated this will really be my first one so that's exciting we're playing on brogue ce 1.9.3 the community edition that's what it, they run it on And yeah, you're right, Zylan. This is a different way to experience the the game, I think. Um, it'll definitely be different from a viewer perspective if you've played the seed before. Um, it's always fun watching a streamer experience something that you know what's coming and they don't. <laughs> so I think that part will be fun. But I guess it also means you get to participate less in the backseat because you have the forbidden knowledge of spoilers. So... Uh, but it's always interesting to see th these seeds like diverge pretty quickly because of how Brogue works and you have to like commit to a build early. So it's kind of interesting to see the decisions that people make. And yeah, and like in the seed contest, sometimes I just like read the results, even though I didn't like play the seed because like people don't really talk about their Brogue runs so casually and like normally like that. And it's fun just seeing people like talk about what made or break their games and stuff. So it'll be fun to be able to read the thread after I actually get to play it too, which I haven't done before. Um, but yeah, let's check this one out. One thing about this is if we actually want to like win the seed, we're going to have to play conservatively and like safely, which I haven't been doing before. I've mostly been like experimenting and doing weird things and like making like quote unquote like bad or like not safe decisions, which has been awesome because we've gotten some strong builds by doing that and like really surprise ourselves. And like if we hadn't been playing like that, we may have never like realized some of the potential of certain items and item combinations. So that's a really cool thing we've been doing. So I don't know how we're going to play this. Maybe we if, if the meme potential is there. It's gonna be hard to resist it. Uh, like I know, even if I say I won't, it'll be hard to resist. So we'll, we'll we'll see how this goes, but we will lean on the safer end, I think, so we can try and like actually get a win. And yeah, we're actually gonna have to grab gold because the the seeds are like ranked based, or the contest is ranked based on score, and, and gold is part of the score. So I'm, I'm to my great dismay, we're gonna have to like, pick up some gold this this run. I think it's gonna feel weird. And I may even forget to, so we'll see. Uh, you want to try Brogue, so you wanted to learn the game a bit from watching? Oh yeah, definitely. Feel free to ask questions. Um, lots of knowledgeable people in the chat. And uh, yeah, enjoy your stay. Welcome, Arch. Good to see you. Alright, let's get this thing started. So the seed is provided. And they also give you the screenshot of the starting area, which matches what we have here. So let's get this thing started. We started in a bog. No lag today, thankfully. Last time was weird. Only my channel was lagging. That's unfortunate. Go to the right first, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
so this is interesting right off and something i was reading about on the subreddit recently someone posted another example of a seed like this the entrance is always in the middle and the bottom when you start a game except when it gets displaced by a vault so this looks like a vault actually right here so by not starting there we actually know that there was a vault in the normal starting location which is a kind of neat piece of contextual information when you start a seed should grab this potion in case we end up doing potion IDing here with the vault. I'm going to drop it here so I don't mix it up with other potions that might be need required for keys. A war axe. All right. By the way, my last game, the one that we got the obstruction tunneling mastery, where I started like two tiles away from a war pike and then accidentally threw it at a bloat, the war pike was a minus two war pike of plenty. So no harm done there. As disappointing as it was when I accidentally like lost it. Yeah, I had to check the recording later, so that was funny to see. Bloatware. <laughs> yes, exactly. This looks like a key. Yep. See the key. Wow, what a big room. All right, I think we just don't care about the fire. water right here. Nice. Th this key holder, how it works is there's, and it was really obvious when this room is filled with grass, there's a torch on the wall and when you pick up the key, the torch lights uh, the grass on fire and then the fire spreads. Shortcut. Okay, rat. Yeah, if we waited around at the edges, we probably could have gotten a, an ash tile to step onto before we lit on fire. But with the water right there, I didn't really care. All right, we get a choice of a staff from the first vault here. Firebolt, Poison, Obstruction, Lightning, and Discord. Um, Obstruction and Firebolt are like the best auxiliary staves here. And then Discord, I think. Um, Lightning could be a cool staff to build around. With our War Axe, I think we might want to at least assume that the War Axe could be like our primary item to enchant early in this run. Taking a big item, or big weapon, which is like the War Axe, War Pike, Broadsword, or War Hammer, is really like one of the safest ways you can play the early game. Poison's cool. Um, I need to do another Poison build sometime. One of, my, one of my first runs was a Poison run. Um, it was Poison and Obstruction, actually, which was really cool. And I had like a Ring of Wisdom and a couple other like staves supporting it. It was slow and I had hunger problems. But this doesn't feel like the kind of build where I'm going to commit the poison yet. I think the Firebolt is the most immediately useful staff here. There's a lot of uses for like lighting things on fire. Um, it can help us early to kill things. Because burning is, does a lot of damage early. So it seems like a, a good choice to grab here. We can come back and swap it out for obstruction or something later if we want.
Is there no gold on the last floor? What a great floor. Oh, actually, there might never be gold on the first floor. I was actually, like, looking at the item generation code yesterday, and I'm not very proficient in programming, or the bro code is my first time looking at it. I don't know C. So I spent, like, two hours, like, just, like, kind of, like, staring at some probably, like, pretty basic code trying to make sense of it. Um, but I did eventually, like, I was kind of curious about just various item things, and the thing that I ended up looking at the most was, um, how many items are generated on a floor, which is pretty interesting. Basically, every floor starts with three items, and then when the floor is generated, it rolls a 60% chance to add another item, and it keeps rolling that check until it fails, and that's how many items are going to generate on the floor. And um, I actually made like a little table of the probabilities of any item distribution on a given floor. And I think up to, actually, let me pull that up. It's on, it's on my Discord in the traditional roguelikes channel right now. So there's like a, up to six items is around a 10% chance and around a 5% chance of seven items. And then it drops off pretty quickly from there. But most floors are gonna have three to four items. That makes up 64% of all floors. And then another 15% chance for five items. So it's kind of interesting information to be aware of because you find like a lot of items like close to you, then it might, and like you see the stairs, it might not be worth like exploring the rest of the floor if there's only, you know, there's only like a 5% chance of there actually being like another item there. Now, the other thing is though, items, it, I think the way they're generated is they actually want to have a lot of doors between the upstairs and where the item is generated with a much higher weight given to secret doors. So the items will usually be further away from the exit and then hidden in secret rooms if possible, which is kind of interesting as well. So I thought that was fun to look at, and that could be useful information for making decisions. You were checking the CE code some days ago, still lost in that. The pick item category function seems to imply that there's a pretty high chance for gold to be chosen, but you're somewhat lost at that C code. Uh, yeah, although later in the code, it implies that gold can't can't take those items. Or if it's generated, like, because there's another, a separate variable for gold generated. And I'm not sure that comes into play. Because I, I had been told that gold can replace items. So I, I didn't get that far looking at it. But there are, like, comments in the code that imply that um, gold can't replace a normal item. But yeah, in the pick item category function there, it's the highest probability. So I don't know how that all works out. You think if you see a lot of items near the stairs, you should still assume there's a 60% chance of additional items. That's an interesting chance. Actually, that's a good chance to look at it. Because if you see the items that you know they're generated, so there's always gonna be a 60% chance of another item on the floor that you haven't seen. I guess the likelihood of that goes down as you've revealed more tiles because there's less space where that could have generated, so you can kind of rule that out. Um, but you're right, that's a bit of a gambler's fallacy to assume that if you've seen like five items that it's unlikely that there's another item on the floor because it's still about probably 60% because that's like where you are in that that string. So that's a really good ob observation. What are the uses of gold in this game? Gold only applies to score. There are no shops, nothing you can do with gold.
Have we full explored this floor? It looks like we have. I don't see any nooks that probably have secret rooms. Oh, uh, what if this is a room? Did I not see this? Should I look here real quick? I'm going to. That kind of stuff bugs me. Shift E has the, or CE has the shift T command to repeat the last throw action. Oh, nice. I was thinking about that as I was doing that. I was like, I wonder if I should rebind my darts to T to make this easier. But yeah, that's good to know. I'm not super familiar with all of the CE improvements. now you die please I guess we're gonna chill here for a while the worst is when your items fall away and something else ends up in the C key <laughs> This is brutal. I, I just got a full heal to full. Then I get through without even running into another eel. I was concerned about the steam there. I don't know how that works exactly. Oh, am I just gonna die here? <laughs> Blood word is so close. There we go. Oh my god, give me it. Ah, another vault. Yeah, I was trying. If you shoot a firebolt over water, does it create a steam under it? Oh, I guess that is what ha what happens, Zylan. Okay, because the fire didn't actually travel over water, and then the goblin actually didn't burn standing in water. There was like actually no fire to catch, create steam. If the goblin was two tiles away, I think it would have created steam. Um, how's this one work? Is there a levitation potion? I, I assume that's what's here. We found a puce potion here and a white potion. We found a lot of potions on this floor actually. I just did a search for the, uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lever. Shatter vault? No, it's definitely this key. 
Uh, actually, the Shatter Vault wouldn't have a door. It would just have a statue. So we want to try try out these potions. Levitation. Cool. Oh my god. Look at this. I thought this was a secret room earlier, and then I just assumed maybe this was filled with lava once I saw this room. Wow, what an odd place for a door. Oh, I, I guess there's going to be a, a path here now. That'd be funner if there wasn't a path. So this is going to be a nested vault. I should have took a closer look in here. Ooh, a Warhammer. Another staff of obstruction and a key. If there is a vault on the level, there is a key to open it. Yeah, so there's... um. There's rooms and vaults and then like, or keys. And then there's always like a solution to solve it. It's like a lock and key puzzle. So like that one, you knew that there was either a potion of levitation or a potion of fire immunity to get to that. Cause there's no other way to get to that. So if you understand what all the, the key holders, which is what that type of room is called, how they work, then you can figure that out. And there's some really clever ones. Could have killed you if the key was for the other door. Um, well, this was always going to reveal itself or like fill in the lava. So we would have been fine. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. The other vault looks awesome because rings are like game changing. And if there's like a ring of wisdom in here, we can backtrack up to the first floor and maybe grab another staff. Oh, is this steam? I was wondering if that was steam or... Okay, you're right. That could have been bad. I didn't realize how that worked. No, you're right. So, the steam... Before, I was looking at this and I was like, is that steam? I was like, no, it's just the ground forming. So I thought... It, like, it just turned light first. But you're right, they're scalding steam. So that could, that could have been dangerous. Um, it wouldn't have killed us. I think we'd have just had to wait here on top of the altar. That's good to know that that creates steam. Um, but yeah, rings can be really powerful. Having the staff vault upstairs um, makes the rings more interesting to me. And having a war axe that's potentially useful makes this warhammer like a little less intriguing. Although it'd be really fun to play like a warhammer build. Although we don't have anything that synergizes terribly well with it. I'd rather use the War Axe if it's anything good. I'm inclined to try and see if we have Detect Magic yet. To figure out if our War Axe or this Warhammer is enchanted. Or at least not cursed. Um, there was Obstruct in the other library. Yep. I'm kind of curious to like try it like a, a true wizard build though um if there's like a wisdom ring in here we can grab like the lightning staff or something which i've never done stuff oh yeah we know this one isn't cursed i'm more curious um you're, you're right i was more curious about the war axe because the war hammer becomes a lot more attractive when we know the war axe is cursed What is the reason to pick the Firebolt Staff instead of Lightning? Um, fire damage. So Firebolt can do a lot of things. You can burn grass. You can get rid of bloats. You can and like not have their gases. You can remove like paralysis gas from traps you step on. Um, and stuff like that. And and the burning damage from it just makes it so early on you do like a lot more damage early on, like overall, and you don't even have to like enchant it. Like, the Lightning Staff feels like something that has to, like, be enchanted. It 
if you burn grass and make an enemy walk through it, they end up taking a lot more damage. Um, it's just better. Like, this Firebolt Staff will be good through the entire game. Even if we don't enchant it. That gives it, like, a lot of value. I think we just don't worry about Detect Magic right now. Go grab this key and see what's in the other vault. Wisdom, Transference, Clairvoyance, and Awareness. So we, we did get a Wisdom Ring here if we want to grab that and a different staff. So here's what I'm thinking. If this wasn't the weekly the weekend contest, I would totally go like Wisdom and Lightning here because that's something I've never tried before and sounds fun. I don't think it's going to be as good as just like building around our like War Axe. Like War Axe Transference is actually like a really solid build right here. It's probably the safest one. So now, now I'm at odds is at, of if I want to just try something different or like play the seed well, because it's like the weekend contest. And I think we're going to have trouble early on with Wisdom and Lightning Bolt. I don't think it's going to be good until we get like a lot of enchants. All Clan says play for the win. Yeah, that's what I said I would do and what I'm leaning towards. Just because it's the weekend contest. Yeah, the, the contest has like a different rule set. We should play towards the contest, especially for my first one. So let's grab the transference ring. So if this war, hopefully the war axe isn't cursed. Transference in general becomes very good early. Like with just your dagger and like transference, you could almost start dealing with like jellies and vampire bats and stuff a lot better. Yeah, stabs are common, which is a, a nice point for wisdom. But that implies that you're going to just get a lot of value out of like unenchanted stabs, which you, you can. Discord, obstruction, tunneling, blinking, entrancement are all stabs that are like awesome. Even at like two or three charges. And then with wisdom, you just get so much more value out of those. Let's roll with this. I think this is how the seed wants to be played. All right, I'm gonna start searching a lot. Even though I did waste a lot of turns on the first few floors so far. You're kind of scared how did Twitch know to recommend me? You're following me on YouTube already? That's funny, I don't know. That is scary a little bit. I mean, do you watch any similar content on Twitch, or did you just like log in for the first time and like I was there? Because that that would be really concerning. But regardless, I'm glad you found us and welcome. Uh, the wiki is pretty solid, Glord, but it's not like the NetHack wiki good, and it's not some information's outdated or not perfect. I use the wiki a lot. You're following NetHack and CDDA? Uh, that's probably why. I don't think you should be terribly concerned. Rogue is definitely a related game, and I've done a lot of NetHack streams, so... Okay, that was another toad, right? 
it didn't even see me. I don't know what this is off to the left. Okay, we're not hallucinating anymore. Um, let's eat our food. Oh. Okay, we're hallucinating again. I'm not too scared about Halu with our Firebolt staff. So I think we can kill most anything that would, um, even tough things that would spawn here with fire. Okay, I should stop messing with eels. Split mail. That's definitely intriguing. I oh, far we get the whip too. That could be something interesting. Let's zap the pit bloat. Two chromium wands, I wonder what those are. You like NetHack, but you liked watching Quill play it with that somewhat 3D tile set, but never have seen anyone else use it on YouTube. That's probably Vulture, the isometric one, right? It's not very good for like gameplay, which is probably why people don't really use it much. Going to haul gear up to try for detect match with the earlier vault. Um, well, we can't get back into the earlier vault because we used the key. Um, so we're not going to use it there. I was just dropping some items here because I assumed I was getting close. And I knew I wasn't going to be using any of this stuff. And having it near the downstairs meant if I did use detect magic on this floor, it would have been ID'd. Okay, do we want to start using potions? Probably. So we're at the thing where it's like, do we want to use potions on the new floor? It'd be nice to like, see if we can find another vault before using a potion, another treasure room, but who knows when we're going to see one. And we don't really want to get descented on a new floor. If we can find the exit quickly, that's like the ideal way to identify potions. We do have water right here. I think we just go for it here. Invisibility. Caustic gas. All right, let's jump downstairs. Uh, let's just take advantage of this invisibility. Um, sneak attack. I'd like to kill that jelly before he heals. Just firebolt him, I guess. We're no longer invisible. I should, uh, actually that's not a great place to leave items, is it? Actually it is, because I have items on upstairs. Um, maybe we'll go up and try the green potion. Strength, nice. I'm gonna drink both of those right away. We can now use our whip, but we don't know if it's 
curse, so we don't want to try it yet. Cool, detect magic. Okay, so the the war axe is neutral, the splint mail is neutral, the whip is uh, enchanted or possibly runic. So let's start using the whip right away. Um, slight accuracy decrease, but better damage. And you can attack from a distance with the whip. So that could be something interesting, potentially. Um, and yeah, we could start enchanting the War Axe pretty soon, and we'll actually be able to wield it. Transference plus Whip kills bats pretty well. I bet it does, actually. That sounds like a solid combo. Always thinking about your, your next potential threat, which in the early game is bats and ogres. Oh, we did have a close stare. I could have Detect Magic on that floor, indeed. It's too bad. Well, let's drop some items here. Grab some inventory slots. Um, I got a curse scroll too. All cursed one. Get out of my sight. I never finished exploring this. I should have went that way first. Plus three scale mail with an unknown runic. That is really intriguing. So this is a tough room for us right now. There are eels in this water. And when I pick this up, the water is going to overflow. I could use a potion of invisibility to get out of this pretty easily. Oh, we can probably fight eels with the whip now. Oh, this is awesome. Wait, so you can hit eels that you don't see? That's amazing. Okay. Oh, maybe it was only because they attacked me first. Hey, what up, Fred? Welcome. Okay, looks like this one's cleared out. Oh my god, that's a lot of eels. Okay, my health is a little problematic here. Uh, was I still in the water bumping into him? That, that's what was happening, yeah. All right, I need to heal a bit, so let's go explore somewhere else for a bit. Another pink jelly. back to the doorway so there was one more tile for him to split into that wasn't behind me. I mean, I think there was a blood wart upstairs. Man, we just full healed off of the, the jellies. Oh my god, that was close. I should take my, my eels more seriously. <laughs> I, I do usually. Yeah, this uh this this is actually really close. That was a good uh call with the blood wart. I think we would have lost the game if I grabbed this armor. Yeah, so that one just chunked me for 30% of my health at full health.
We're going to identify this whip really quickly, though. 14 more enemies. Uh, yeah, we have not ID'd life. All right, let's explore some more and heal. Nice. Ah, oh, there is a vault on this floor. Hey, what up, Zen Zombie? Welcome. Oh, shoot, I didn't even see these jellies, but this is fine. Yeah, I forgot how easy transference makes jellies, too. We ID'd it yet? 273 more turns. Uh, yeah, don't... Don't provide any spoilers on the seed if you've played it before. Just enjoy... Knowing what's coming... <laughs> before I do. Alright, let's see if we can get this monkey. I played that poorly. Oh well. The conjurer is going to come around one of these corners. Or maybe it's going to walk the other way. Where'd it go? There it is. Ah, oh, it found me. Yeah, jellies are only one one kill. Um, I was racking up kills off of the eel eels, I think. Um, no build yet, but in the top two vaults, I grabbed the one of Staff of Firebolt and the Ring of Transference. And we know the War Axe, um, which I'm not. I have a War Axe and a Splint Mail. They're both plus zero. So at the very least, I think War Axe Transference is a pretty strong build for most of the game. Um, there's also a plus three scale mail over here, which is pretty strong. If I weren't playing the weekly contest, which is like a one-time seed thing, I probably would. I I know I would have grabbed wisdom and lightning to have some fun with like a build I've never tried before. How varied can builds be? Um, more varied than most games. Um, since Brog doesn't have experience, there's a lot of room for stealth gameplay, and it's actually kind of essential later on because the enemies later on are tough as nails, and you can't fight them straight up generally. Thank you so much for the uh, the Prime sub there, Fred. I appreciate it. Four months. Awesome stuff. Alright, we'll worry about this later. At least a half dozen meme builds. That is true. I think I can cheese these goblins. This whip is awesome. Uh oh, an ogre. I was hoping to get a sneak attack on the ogre. He knocked me out of the burning. That was very polite of him. Sweet play. Builds correspond to roles in other games. Yeah, so kind of the whole idea is one of like the core design philosophies of Brogue is like simplify the controls and the UI. So progression actually works through equipment. So you find scrolls of enchantment that are, they're random, but they're like regulated so that you get them like kind of consistently every few levels. And you put your enchantment scrolls into items and that's how you create your builds. 
So if you want to play like a warrior, you enchant armor, you enchant um, your weapon and other stuff. If you want to play the wizard, you enchant your like staves. Yeah, exactly, Zen. Plus two ring of transference, not bad. We actually probably could have ID'd that by paying attention to my health. Because I think that one actually works. Um, the way it, the way it is, even when it's, when it's unidentified. Maybe I'm not 100 percent sure. Five more enemies. To ID the whip. Plus one or plus three would have answered the question. Do I go back? Yeah, so they're just stuck in the middle. Um, I'm not sure what this fault's gonna be. Maybe turrets. Oh, the floor collapsing. Um, that was harmless. Alright, I'm gonna go kill a few more eels. Here, since I'm gonna have to regen afterwards anyways. Try to. There's one. I think that's all the eels in this pool. We. This one's probably full of eels. Uh, plus two whip. That is not a build. That's all the eels dead now. Buy some time until the build shows up. Yeah, we, we're not going to be forced to commit to like the axe or something else too early. So finding an item like that is definitely awesome. You now have a plus three scale mail with an unknown runic. If you, you hear a heavy click and the nearby water begins flooding the area. So let's throw that on immediately so we can start identifying that runic. Be funny if it was animal immunity or something that would have prevented the eels anyways. Um, can items be cursed or uncursed? Yep, there is a scroll of remove curse and enchanting items removes the curse and also scrolls of protection will remove the curses. More rings. Transference, light, and stealth this time. Oh man, we could have had stealth warhammers. That would have been interesting. Um, I don't know what I like here. Well, we might end up using the scale mail all game. So stealth is pretty intriguing because we'll have low stealth all game. Or a low stealth radius all game with scale mail and like a ring of stealth. Light is just awesome, but we're not going to get a lot of value from it for like 10 or 15 floors. Because the top of the dungeon is pretty well lit. Honestly, a second transference ring would be pretty sweet. Just double up on the transference. Like, with that and like, I guess the war axe will be cruising <laughs> for a while. It's honestly probably the best pick here right now, but it's not the strongest, like, late game, I think. Um, so where does that leave us? Uh, 
I might go with the transparency again. <laughs> if I didn't have a war axe and a whip, I think I'd be really intrigued by the stealth, but I feel like a broadsword or a war hammer would be way more interesting for the stealth. And the ring of light's just not going to be valuable until later. So, transparency it is, we might come back to this vault. Stealth plus War Axe equals sneak attack damage. Yeah, but the War Axe has like low-ish damage. I I'm not intrigued by the sneak attack damage of the War Axe, honestly. M maybe not as much as I should be. It's way more interesting with like a broadsword or a, a, a war hammer. Or if we were playing like a, a caster build, then the stealth would be really cool. I'm gonna stick with the transference for now. Room for four more items. I, we don't have a need to enchant anything yet. Transference is kind of cool with the whip, too. Um, what is the whip base damage? I'm going to look that up on the wiki, actually. Some of the wiki is pretty good for. A 3 to 5 damage. Not a whole lot. I wonder how the rounding works on that. Transference works for the instantaneous damage of damaging staves. But it won't work on like the burning effect from Firebolt or the, like poison from the poison staff. Yeah, so the whip isn't that amazing. I think the moment that we can enchant our war axe enough to get it our strength matching, like enough to use it with that penalty, we probably just do that. And I think we're gonna be cruising through like the early and mid game with a war axe and some transference rings. Depending on what the runic on the scale mail is, we might end up maybe deciding to swap out some uh some items and vaults, but this is pretty pretty interesting build so far. And yeah, let's go ahead and ditch the leather as someone just noted. Honestly, I can probably not care about the splint either. The plus three scale mail is better than the plus zero splint. It, it provides more armor and has like a significantly better stealth radius. Um, and that's a dagger, we're not gonna pick that up. So we have room for three items in our pack, let's continue. So that's a goblin pack. Detect magic potion. I can eat my food now. War Axe would be awesome against that Goblin pack. I'm actually a little concerned about it otherwise, though. Or, I'm not concerned about it in general. I'm concerned about running into it in a bad spot. Being surrounded by goblins is not what we want to be do. Pack is too full. Know where the nearest door such corridor is, and the whip beats goblins pretty well. Yeah, if we had a choke point, it would be awesome. All right, let's start hucking items down. Chasms.
Those are the only things I'm willing to get rid of at the moment. Oh, there they are. I don't know where the other guys went. They lost their friends. Okay, this is one way to eat a goblin pack, is fight them all one at a time. I'll take it. Gotta say, these whip sneak attacks are a lot of fun. I know, 100% health, right? Awesome stuff. Another detect magic? Is that two? Oh no, I just saw that one on the ground earlier. Didn't pick it up. Full pack, more items. Stairs. Okay, we probably want to read ID, use ID some stuff. Hey, what up, SD? What's going on, dude? We are broging. Drop a few more things. Let's whip the bloats. I gotta say, the whip is fun. Um How's the gear looking so far? We got a plus three scale mail with a runic we don't know yet. I got a plus two whip. I got two rings of transference. A staff of fireball, and then I have a war axe that I'm waiting to enchant. Test respiration. Um yeah, we can do that. This is actually a pretty safe place for it, too. Oh, I'm carrying a curse scroll. Okay. Actually. Your scale mail flat uh, scale mail of multiplicity. So how does this one work? Glowing runes of multiplicity adorn the scale mail. When worn, 33% of the time that an enemy's attack connects, one allied spectral duplicate of your attacker will appear for three turns. That sounds pretty interesting. So, does enchanting this? I assume it increases the proc chance and also the number of turns. This sounds perfect for our Transference War Axe build. I am totally on board with this. Except what is this eel doing out of the water? Yeah, good. 
And chance increases the number of allies. But not proc chance or duration. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, we gotta like use stuff. Let's equip our war axe and start reading scrolls. Maybe we'll get protection. Remove curse. Nothing in our pack is cursed right now. Uh, well, these potions could be. And I guess I didn't have anything else. First level up is at plus five. Okay. I could see the value in increasing that to plus five. At least for that. I don't think I'm going to go too too heavy on it. And I assume there's going to be the next one's at like plus eight or plus ten or something. I'm probably not going to put that many enchants into it. But I can see us dumping two enchants into there to get plus five. I think getting our war axe online is uh, top priority though. Um, I'd like to save our enchant scrolls in case we find a different weapon. So I'm not going to test these stacks yet. Five, seven, and nine. Oh, that's actually a lot better than I thought. So just the first upgrade is pretty high, but then the next ones follow pretty closely. So once you're at plus five, putting in two more, I, I could see the, the motivation to do that for sure. At the same time, that doesn't sound like a powerful build on its own, just like a really, really nice effect. Only procs on hit. So yeah, that's actually anti-synergistic with having high defense to begin with. That's a really fun effect, though. I, I like that. Oh, that's an ogre. Wait. Oh, I have my War Axe equipped. Shoot, I was trying to sneak attack the Ogre. I still have my War Axe equipped. Alright, well, we're going to do this. about all that later three turns seems low uh yeah it does seem a little low like if they don't even spawn like next to the enemy like they might only get like one attack in This is unfortunate. Bad place to run into a centipede. Firebolt, centipede missed us. We're 
burning. Yikes, we should probably look for a potion of life. Oh, something else I noticed looking at the item generation code. You can actually figure out when you're guaranteed to have a potion of life. I think it the first potion of life appears at D4 on average, and then it can be plus or minus two levels. So by def, by the def we're on, we're clear def six. We're guaranteed to have a potion of life. There's a solid chance we have two. I feel like we should find that. Cool, we have a, another one. Oh, I should've waited till I was done burning. It's okay. And just food spawn. Um, I don't know about food yet. Food is actually based on like nutrition. So if you get mangoes, which are less, give you less nutrition than food rations, it can like change it. Okay, looks like the exit is off to the right. And my pack is, uh, I have room for one more item. I need to go grab this potion of visibility. We're gonna have to fight that ogre. It's gonna be a little awkward. I don't know where the ogre went. He's probably in the room in the bottom left. Roughly every four levels. Yeah, I'm curious what the like nutrition per floor is for that. Actually, that's one of the things I wanted to look up at some point. I'll say, hey, what's up, TME? Yeah, there was a comment in there that said it got more common as you descend. Although I think the way it looked like it was written is that that doesn't apply to like death 20. I might be thinking of something else. Nice, unaware ogre or a sneak attack on the ogre. Burning ogre. Burn you again. Should mark my staff use here. Is recovering every 250 turns, I'm assuming? No, 166. Cool. 
need to drop more items over here. Um, we can probably start using the War Axe, assuming we have four enchant scrolls. Hey, welcome, Klein. Damn, I screwed this up. <laughs> Did you see the allied Goblin Conjurer from Multiplicity? That's funny, they normally don't even attack you. An allied ogre. What? An ogre and a goblin mystic? That's a uh, strong pairing. Seed has so much stuff. Yeah, it really does, doesn't it? Goblin Mystic just hanging out by the, the turret trap. God dang it. Well, if you didn't die, you, would, you wouldn't be able to watch right now, so it's okay. <laughs> That's funny. There's a little bit of secret room area up here, but it's not likely. Um, it's on Reddit slash r slash roguelike slash broke forum. One of the top posts should be for the weekend contest. That's where the seat is. Well, there's the exit. I could do one more floor if I can ma manage it without going crazy for our inventory. And then we commit to the, the war axe. I'm supposed to grab this gold. We can contest and all. Let's use the Detect Magic Potion. And I'm going to check these items and then enchant the War Axe. Oh, and I deed. Plus three Transference Ring. Wow. So we have a total of plus five Transference now. So Transference um, is linear scaling. It's 5% per enchantment, I believe. So... We get 25% of the damage we deal back as health, which is pretty awesome, <laughs> especially once we get this War Axe online.
That is quite good. What a sick find. Oh, we found the other bad scroll. Get out of my inventory. An ogre, you say? Easy, thanks to our allies. I'm using the auto pathing because I haven't been searching these rooms, so I want to walk out on the same tiles that I walked in on, which it prioritizes. Um, and that's to avoid stepping on the traps. Oops. How far can I throw scrolls? They actually go this far? Wow. Not only is this guy, is the rogue good at basketball, he seemed pretty good at baseball too, at pitching at least. Oh, this is funny. I can't even walk past this turret. Because of the whip. I'm going to remove the whip and walk past it, though. This is like, I feel like too big of a space to ignore. This is actually a pretty big space too. I wonder what the chances of us missing a secret room right now are. Well, there's no magic items in there, so it would only be golden food. I think we just found food recently. I'm tempted to search a little better. With a War Axe Transference build, I don't think we're gonna have Hunger problems. Oh, should have saw that coming. <laughs> it's like you search the shatter. <laughs> you see a shadow or sh I, I can't even talk. A statue shatter and a giant ogre pops out. Ah, I knew there was something over here. Wasn't even a secret. Whoops. Uh, you can fight him, Ogre. Uh, we did detect magic on the floor and the effect is also permanent. Oh, did the mystic die? What killed the mystic? Oh, the spark went through all my allies. That's really unfortunate. They're pretty fragile. On the Bro Ground Robin account we've been playing, we had a two Mystic allies at one point, and they wouldn't follow me down a chasm, and I think that's probably because their health is too low. It's okay, I don't really like leaning into allies too much anyways, so. It's a little tedious, but the Ogre plus the Mystic is a pretty potent combo, because the ogre like never dies if he's constantly protected by the mystic. Oh, we didn't kill these guys yet, did we? Wait, no, this is like a different pack. Hmm, 
that ogre's gonna die if I leave him out here alone. Oh, that was a spectral goblin? I did not want to displace them. Man, too bad I don't have my war axe on right now. Why can't I kill this jackal? Oh, it's shielded, okay. God, they're all shielded. Oh my god, I gotta stop doing that. Okay, let's get the mystics. Transference, not bad. can fight that toad. Oh shoot, are you not going to fight him? Come on, dude. There's a lot of suspiciously empty space too. I'm just curious. Actually, I might connect from the top. Pushing a strength. Okay, that seals it. War axe time. Plus four war axe. 15 strength requirement. We have 15 strength. Oh, yeah. Grab the gold. Feels so wrong. Let's go ahead and check out some of these other scrolls. Sanctuary. Oh, I gotta be careful where I read stuff like Sanctuary. What else? Am I missing like Discord or anything yet? I already used Discord. Shattering Negation. Hey, what up, Atheros? Yeah, we need a bugle for the battle cry. Do, 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 do. My voice doesn't get that high pitched. Protect armor, heck yeah. hunting. Let's get you out of that grass. Whoops. Oh, I have a battle axe now. Let's just kill you. I was like, I'll whip you. I'll trade places with my ogre. How did you get the ally? So in Brogue, you can stumble upon um, allies that are like chained up. And they're at low health, and they have captors. And you have to kill the captors. And once you free them, they become your allies. Um, and then they fight with you. And getting, like, an ogre ally is pretty strong, even at this depth. We sort of brogue sounds. That could be... That would be fun. Here, let's give our friend some blood wort. Yeah, heal up, bro.
I'm so excited for a plus five transference war axe shenanigans. Oh no. The one thing that we can't compete with. Acid mounds. You remember we had an uber cool ally in one of our earlier streams, a legendary? Yeah, that was the only time I've ever had a legendary ally. It was an Ifrit. That thing was sweet. All these acid mounds. Oh my god. You deal with them, please, ogre. Acid mounds are. Oh, am I in there? Here we go. We got one hunting. So, this is a particularly good use of allies, is I don't have to deal with the problem of acid mounds. We have our third chromium wand. What the heck? I wonder what this wand is. Having three of, a, of some kind of wand could be incredible. Do they have a passive? Um, so how acid mounds work is if you attack them and you're wielding a weapon, your weapon gets corroded, which is minus one enchantment. So that'd be terrible with our war axe. And if they attack you, then you get minus um, enchantment to your armor. Our armor is protected though. Protected is noted by this curly bracket, and that's from reading a scroll of protect armor while we were wearing this. So we don't have to worry about the armor. Um, they don't do damage when you hit them, though, but they do do damage on the attack, but it's kind of low. You know they're equal probability, but whenever wands pile up for you, they seem to be telly. I would love to get some telly wands. Uh, yeah, they're like disenchanters. Exactly. But you can't see through paralysis triggers. Never noticed that. Oh no, this must be on grass. That's probably why. An art sketch with triple chromium. Yeah, you gotta just to one up the triple uh <laughs> the triple or the double firebolt staff. Triple wands now. Did my ogre step on that? Did you kill the spider? Oh my god, he's gonna die. Okay. Rip ogre. I'm glad you got to kill the dozen acid mounds on this floor before you died. now. Yep. Wow. That was an oblivious ogre. Oh, you know that bug that we saw in Discord with the paralysis cloud getting stuck next to a bog? 
But if you did that with Bloodwort, that'd be pretty, pretty good. It sounds pretty strong. Hmm, this bog looks scary. How many invis pots do we have? Three, and I used one already. Oh, I almost forgot to grab that gold. F10. Hmm, we've still only used one push in a life. Uh, the beta symbols are statues. Which are mostly just flavor. But they're also like impassable terrain that you can see through. Um, sometimes they're traps, and a monster pops out. Sometimes the only way into a vault is there's a statue that you have to shatter in front of it. Our first vamp bat. Zero threat for us. This Potion of Strength is actually best saved. Kind of curious if these scrolls are identifying. Go ahead and read one. We don't care about negation or shattering right here, I don't think. Dual negation scrolls, okay. There's actually a bridge here that connects over there. Or does it? Yeah, there's just a boatload of goblins over there. It's rare, but there can technically be Krakens at this death. guys spilled out, huh? Is it Goblin Mystic with a charm? A plus one negation charm. That's fun. Sneak attack on the ogre. Hunted by a wraith. Um, this fight's slightly sketchy. We should be fine with transference. But bad RNG. Okay, we got amazing RNG, so not a problem at all. Um, there's a lot of variance to that fight, which is always a little concerning. If we missed like two or three times and they got hits, um, that could have gone poorly. We have a firebolt to kill them when they try to flee, which is always nice. Um, the dungeon is finite. I, the base dungeon has 26 floors. And that's where the Amulet of Yendor rests, where you grab that and bring it to the surface, and that's how you win. Um, but it also goes down to dungeon level 40, and those floors are really difficult. And then there's items called Lumen Stones that spawn down there, and if you grab those, that's like extra bragging rights. Because it's hard to collect them. And then there's another exit on dungeon level 40, and if you get that, it's called a Mastery. Our last run, we got a Mastery and collected some Lumen Stones. Which is my first mastery, actually. It was a somewhat surprising build. Oh, this is going to be fun, guys. We're about to charge in and just wreck some goblins with our war axe. Just like straight up barbarian style. Let's friggin' do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, everyone might not know this. Every, like, base weapon in Brogue has, like, a special attack pattern. Axes attack every tile around you. Kind of like what they do in DCSS. 
So they are like amazing against like like masses of weak enemies like goblins. Oh my god. That was fun. Pretty soon armor is going to start specializing sort of like that too. Yeah, th there were some cool um, notes on armor. I like that. That, that was a, a good observation that armor is somewhat uninteresting. And, and I like the direction of that armor overhaul. So that could be really cool. Hey, what up, uh, Porius? All right, I think we ditched the whip. I'm just having inventory issues. I could drink the potion of strength. I could probably ditch the scroll of negation now that I have a charm of negation. No, oh, where are you at? Or from. The whip would actually be good for enemies like that. Gotcha. Oh, that one had gold. We had to chase them down. Um, do you have a favorite weapon? Honestly, it's boring, but broadsword might be my favorite weapon currently because it does the most damage. I think War Axe is really good, and War Pikes are really good. I, ha I don't have, I I've actually never played with a War Hammer. I think they're a little awkward to use, but really strong. Uh, yeah, SD, so the, the lead and only Brogue developer um, showed up again after being pretty quiet. Pretty quiet might even be an understatement. And they basically contacted the development team, if you can call it that. It's a community project for the community edition. And I guess the idea is that they're going to... He basically passed on a bunch of notes and then has been communicating with them. And he doesn't have like a lot of time to develop stuff, but um, he's like sharing his original ideas and they're like working together to... Um, release like new versions of Brogue with more progressive changes which never made sense to do just as like a community edition because you didn't have like the blessing of the original developer uh, yeah within wheels I think probably just posted the, the notes so lots of cool stuff in there Um, I think we just want to ID some potions. Descent. Awesome find. Creeping death. Should probably just burn this right away. Oh no, I ruined the carpet. Yeah, definitely check it out, SC. It's a, it's a good read. No, you're cool within wheels. I don't really have a URL policy here. I've never had anyone abuse it, so no, haven't had a need for it yet. False Lobster just showed up, so they'll they'll keep all the U URL posters in uh in check. What's up, Lobster? It is going well. We have a fun run going. And also, I think I missed Xylan was asking how the run was going. We have enchanted our War Axe. So we have a plus four War Axe. We have a plus three Scale Mail of Multiplicity. We have two Transference Rings totaling to plus five Transference. Um, that means every hit we reap back 25% of the damage we deal as health. We have three Chromium Wands and a Firebolt Staff. 
and a bunch of potions and a couple of scrolls. Gonna stream any seven DRLs. At some point, I'm probably gonna wait till I played more or they release the the results and do like a a stream of a bunch of the ones that I like a lot. I didn't feel like doing random seven DRLs like I did last year. I, I might have done that if I was less hooked on Brogue. But I'd rather play like showcase good ones, and it's it's hard to like know how to capture the games in OBS, and then sometimes you get like real duds. So I feel like it'd be good just to like put out quality 7 DRLs, or I might do a call for action from like um, developers that are active in like the roguelike community, either on Discord or in, in Reddit, on Reddit. Um, Cause we at least know that there are either gonna be good games or at least that like someone's gonna get value from um, us playing them here and, and testing them for them, so. I think that'll be good. And actually, all the ones I've done for YouTube are people f that are active in my Discord and the Tone Hack community so far. And I have two more of those that are going to be uploaded. I'll do one tomorrow. I'm going to do like one every two days. So it's kind of sticking to YouTube for now. I haven't had a lot of time to actually play or review 7 DRLs yet. So uh, once I find more like good ones, we'll we'll showcase those as well. Yeah, man, you can't be ruining these carpets, then. I guess we already made them bloody. From all the goblins. That, this room is heavily guarded. Oh my god. What could it be guarding? At the stairs, I guess? As long as you don't negate the carpet, I know, right? Okay. I haven't found the stair yet, but there's this oddly empty portion of the map. Oh, not an acid mound. I think we just firebolt that and run from the steam. Wait, that didn't create steam. Interesting. Oh wait, I can't attack this with my... Well, I can punch this guy to death. Or equip the whip. There we go. Oh uh, wait, no, we don't want to attack you with the whip. What am I doing? I will punch you to death. Oh, actually, punching acid mounds with plus five transference is pretty dang strong. I didn't consider that. Flying lets you move over triggers, yep. Yeah, so phantoms won't trigger traps. Explosive bloat? That's a fun combo. Remove curse scroll. Yeah. Another detect magic potion. All right, let's try to ID more negative potions, I guess. Alu. Cool, all of our negative potions are identified. Yes. The developers think of everything. Let me check the asterisks, except for the things they did not think of. It is very true. Yeah. 
Oh, come on. The ogres always swap to hunting when you're about to kill them. What? I got too many misses. I guess I gotta use a life potion here. We almost never lose that fight with transference. I have a potion of strength, so I don't mind meleeing centipedes at the moment. Um, this looks like it might connect. Yeah, it totally does. So we can keep walking over here and then... Actually, I wonder if this connects. I'm concerned that we're going to have to like backtrack all the way over to here. I think we'll be fine, though. If we do have to backtrack. There's at least a chasm here we can go downstairs. You had 19 misses in a row in the Tone Robin game with a 40% hit chance. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. It's pretty crazy. Hey, what up, Draculos? You don't like meleeing centipedes? Oh, this might not connect up here, though. Oh, never mind, it does. It totally does. Or does it? Maybe not. There's a pressure plate. Blood trap. Oh shoot, that's a zombie. So chill out here for a while. Eat my food. Let's wait until we're not nauseous. Yeah, so most of the time we we're fine against centipedes because of our armor and our damage, but losing one strength would be kind of annoying regardless. So it's not always worth the risk, especially when we have like a firebolt staff. Um, but we can definitely take that risk if I'm carrying a potion of strength. It feels like an early ogre shaman. I wonder what their spawn depth is. Maybe this isn't too early. We're getting pretty deep. Typical starting death is 14. Yeah, so this is a little bit early. I think we try to break in here through the wooden door and kill them. I think the Ogre Shaman was on this tile. We might be able to sneak up on them. Zombie sneak attack. Try and get unnauseous. Inactive gas vent. Concerning. It's probably tied to this paralysis trap. Is it another zombie? Axes wreck jellies. Desperate to know what these two tiles have? I think so. All right, nothing. I wonder why I decided to go all the way around. 
That wasn't faster, right? Multiplicity zombie clone gassing the place out worse. Yeah, that was that was a little awkward. Dude, they all just swapped to hunting. That was almost perfect. I'm gonna back up once. Back up twice. Okay. I'm gonna use my negation charm here. We should make it so that the Ogre Shaman can't do much. And okay, the guy in front of me is not the hasted one, so I'm gonna attack these guys. Because I could hit all three of them. Okay, but that one battered me. I'll keep taking advantage of these double hit opportunities when I can. Uh, yeah, the negate should have hit the centipede. Trying to fight the ogres back against walls. So we can t take advantage of not having to be knocked back. Another potion of life, that's an awesome find. Another scroll of enchanting. I'm gonna go ahead and enchant the war axe again. Our to hit isn't quite where I want it yet. to search over here some more because it feels like there's a lot of empty space all right full pack how much unidentified stuff do i have in my inventory two items so i don't really feel like using detect magic here we can use strength, probably. I can ditch the whip, I think. Scroll of negation is kind of droppable with a negation charm. Wow, there's a confusion trap right there, huh? Be careful about walking into water like that. We're definitely at risk of krakens at this depth, and I don't really have a great way of not only dealing with them, but escaping them. Hey, our first dar. I think they're not that threatening to us. I like my odds. Ok, 
Okay, not bad. Wait, millipedes can hunt mice? It's kind of wild. Well, they have like humongous millipedes in some parts of the world, don't they? Hey, a chasm. I guess I can throw down a couple of these chromium wands. Possibly all of them. Saddle up the millipedes. There you go. I'll throw the remove curse scroll down too. It might get burned, but I don't really care. Might end up dropping our darts here soon. Not another acid mound. I want to read this scroll. I think this just dies a firebolt. But if I if it's ID, I want to ID our wand. And I just throw all the wands down the the chasm. Hey, what up, Cali Commuter? Another enchanting scroll. Ogres and an ogre totem. Okay, there's nothing in this room. I'm just gonna walk away. No reason to fight them. Fleeing Wraith, let's just firebolt them. We're actually handling raids pretty well right now. I guess I could have let him live. We do enough damage to some, man. One hitting an ogre like that is a lot of fun, especially when you see all the blood splatter. But yeah, um, we can we can sometimes one hit, not one hit the wraith, but we can chunk the wraith past like the percentage of their health bar where they'll flee and kill them. So they don't just flee indefinitely. We have as much gold already as I often get by the time I win my other runs. Yep, this is the weekend seed contest, Callie. We're playing a good old classic warrior build with a plus five war axe and a Two rings of transference totaling the plus five. And also a, a plus three scale mail multiplicity to boot. Haven't found a bunch uh, many tools on this run outside of the stuff that we have now. I guess it's pretty good we didn't take that wisdom ring because we wouldn't have any other staves. We are rich. If we make it out of this dungeon, we're going to live a luxurious life of fame. Yep, we are totally tanking it. I have two enchant scrolls. A plus seven war axe is pretty awesome for like almost all of the game. So I think we're going to keep enchanting that. We could save one to emergency enchant or negation charm at some point. Negation charm is pretty solid. I could save these in case we get like something else. Um, I think we're always going to be happy to enchant our war axe. I'm just going to 
double enchant it right now. Yeah, we're, we're only at 66% chance at the Blade Master still. We have to fight the bog monsters for the gold. Feels weird, huh? Luckily our build wrecks bog monsters. I don't want to split this jelly. Um, spider's gonna be annoying too. Let's get close to the spider. Oh shoot, I was trying to time it so I wouldn't be stuck. Alright, we won't hit the... I was looking at the jelly stuck timer instead of mine though. I didn't want to multiply the jelly onto this caustic gas trap, is why I did that. Another scroll of enchanting. So bridges are never the only way to get to another tile, another part of the map. So I know there's gonna be another exit here. This actually makes like a good, if we take the bridge, we know there's like a good circular path around the map. So we're probably not gonna go backtracking. So it seems like an interesting reason to take a bridge. Whoops. Fine, I'll give you a free hit, Centipede. Whoops. I'm using control search because in CE that's how you do your like the the full search. But I, I keep holding down control when I go to move still, which does like a, a long move. It's kind of funny. I almost forgot the gold. Oh yeah, this is where I dropped all that stuff. I was like, well, this is an interesting room. Full pack. Throw this. Time to drop the darts, I think. Let's go ahead and Read ID the scroll, still hunting for protect weapon. We ID'd both of the bad scrolls already, so we know it is a positive effect. Hold on. No, I ID'd negation already, so we don't have to worry about negating anything. Not that there's anything on the ground to negate. And identify, oh, am I carrying my wands? Perfect. Oh my God. We have three wands of negation, a negation charm, and a scroll of negation. Call me the negator.
going to negate all the things. That went in, right? Okay, I was going to try and kill you. There we go. Gas vents are scary. Another enchanting scroll. This is nine enchanting scrolls already. We're a little above average for this depth, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not really ready to enchant anything else. We could save these in case we find something else, but I am kind of okay with disenchanting our war axe more. We were only at 66% with the dar. So far. There's like no reason to enchant the negation charm with all this other stuff. Uh, we could have plus five the armor. That's true. Although we're not really getting multiplicity value so far. I don't know how good that actually is. Could be fun though. Oh shoot, I was about to firebolt the bloat, but I'm in... And a bog, that's not a good idea. We do it from here. This is placeholder armor. Yeah, if we found enchanted plate, we would definitely swap out of this. The multiplicity is kind of a fun bonus, I think, but not something to to really influence our decisions. We're more concerned about the stealth and armor aspect of this, I think. Not that it's bad, it's just not worth like building around or anything. It's super fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm like super happy that we found it. A sleeping acidic jelly. Tempted to firebolt that too. Oh, I could negate it. We'll negate that. Because if I negate that, I can attack it, I believe. I was just thinking that one, one of these tiles probably had the... I was going to search on this tile and probably had the, the vent for this, or the trigger for this. But with these tall grass, it was like an awkward place to try and search. I'm going to firebolt this gas cloud and then see if I can outrun this. It worked. Ooh, we have a vault here. Um, commutation is on the table at this point. I have a detect magic. Hope we want to see if there's any magic items in there. Once we open it. Um, looks like it's a... Alchemist, I think is what they call these ones. Furies already. Our build is actually kind of good against Furies. War Axe is good against Furies in general. Pixie. I feel like I should just negate everything. Oh. I don't know why that pixie didn't back up that turn. Dude, fighting goblins, so fun.
Interesting. Which ones of these are real? You are. I forgot they have slow. Can totally drop off some potions here. Looks like a fire trap vault. Oh my god, that's a kraken. Did I just die? Kraken is dangerous. Um, if I negate the kraken, I can walk away. Actually, I don't think they can grapple me. I have levitation potion too. Okay, we have a lot of solutions here. Um, what do our numbers look like against the kraken? Um, so we have a 100% chance to hit them. If I was at full health still, our numbers might not look that terrible with transference. I would attack this guy, but I'm worried about there being more Kraken. I think we do use levitation here because we're gonna want to walk through here. This looks like a oh, this is where the key is. Um, I can actually just levitate over the traps now. That's kind of good all around here. Yeah, so you know how there's um, a key holder that has like chasm traps everywhere or pit traps? There's a version of that with fire traps where there's just like one path through all the fire traps. This one also have to have like krakens in it. This is like a really dangerous one. I never seen one like that actually. The floor is fire traps, yeah. I may as well explore the bog. Oh no, not a dart turret. All right. Cuz the bog turrets can't hurt us. Wait, there's two jellies? I'm going to blow this one up. A violent explosion engulfs the acidic jelly. The acidic jelly catches fire. The flame hits the acidic jelly. And this one I'm going to negate. Um, I guess I use the charm. May as well. There, there's... Actually, a really good reason not to use the charm, just because I have so many wands. 
and the charm could be useful against like reflective things later. Um, but it'll also recharge, so I may as well use it. So now, cool, now we can just kill the jelly. It won't corrode our weapon. Oh look, we have permanent gas tiles. It's the bog thing. Oh yeah, was this one in range? No. So this, I actually have to kill this one with uh, Firebolt again. I thought that one would die to fire. I'm surprised it was still alive, actually. The bog bug, yeah. Wait, will this fire ever go away? Looks like it will, okay. You just notice I'm over here streaming roguelikes in 1080p when many pro streamers who play games with graphics don't. Hey, the the picture quality is really important for roguelikes. You gotta make out that ASCII. Not even not even joking. Just wait until I get up to 60 frames per second. Dude, what's up with all these jellies? I guess this is the one I do negate. The wand. The hybrid tile mode just uh, merged. It's coming next release. Yeah, I was looking at that. I actually prefer straight ASCII. I don't like the terrain features and tiles either. That's just my preference. It's definitely a sweet mode. Wait, is there more stuff down here? You're gonna use it? I, I think it does look good. I, I just don't like some of the terrain tiles. I feel like if just like the walls and like lava chasms and water were tiled, that would be a cool version. We've got a bunch of sweet potions here now. Four invis potions, another detect magic potion, a descent potion. Hell yeah. Oh wait, I was supposed to chasm, whoops. Uh, I guess we don't mind not chasming because of all these items. Do I use detect magic on this floor? Probably no reason to. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick break here and we can think on that. I'll leave my inventory up for you all. I'll be back in like three to five minutes. <laughs> 